Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Supergirl and today we're going to be talking about something interesting and I think you guys will be really into it. So we're going to be talking about the deleted and rejected concepts that never went ahead for Supergirl. So mainly season 1, then also adding in season 2, 3 and 4. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So first off, go check out the recent videos. We made a video to do with Supergirl's premiere date for this new season, season 6. The video is doing really good right now, you guys can go check it out. It was just released a couple of days ago. And so it seems like Azzy Tesfaye confirmed that Supergirl is pretty much on track for an April premiere date for episode 1 of season 6, the final season. But anyway, that's to do with the new season, but let's head back to the older seasons and let's see what didn't actually go through and what was planned. So, starting with season 1, Claire Holt and Elizabeth Lale were the runners-up for the role of Cara Danvers. So that is in terms of the casting process, there were obviously many auditions and I believe Melissa was probably one of the first ones I believe and I know that Melissa actually auditioned with Kyla and Kyla was already on board I'm pretty sure and maybe she was the one that picked. I think she told a story like that at Star Fury a couple of years ago. But anyway, Melissa got the job and the rest is history. Moving on to the next thing, Alex Danvers was originally supposed to be a scientist who specialized in Kryptonian physiology. So this would have been interesting, however, you have to take into account there is literally one other Kryptonian and she wouldn't have known about Supergirl at this point, so the only person she could have studied was Superman. And it just doesn't make any sense that she would be anywhere close to Superman to actually be a specialist in Kryptonian physiology. So I'm glad that they didn't go with this in the end. Okay, so the next thing, Hank Henshaw was originally supposed to be Kara and Alex's childhood friend and Alex's ex-boyfriend and the newly appointed director of the DEO. Obviously what happened in the end, he was already the appointed director of the DEO. He was not anywhere near their age and also he wasn't Alex's ex-boyfriend so that never happened but moving on this is to do with Hank again so Hank was eventually changed into the seasoned veteran and friend of Kara and Alex's parents but was still intended to be an antagonist until it was suggested that he be made into John Jones so whoever came up with the John Jones idea is a genius because it would have been such a waste if they just got rid of David Harewood so the twist was one of the coolest twists on Supergirl that Hank Henshaw was actually Sean Jones, so that was a great point in Season 1. Moving on, Adam Foster was supposed to return but never did. Obviously, Adam Foster was played by Blake Jenner, and due to circumstances, no way is he ever coming back to the show. Same thing with Kara's dad, I'm pretty sure that's why they killed him off, and that's why Adam never came back. Anyway, let's move on past that. So Silver Benchy was meant to return but never did. I don't know why she didn't return, but she had a cool few appearances, especially in the Flash Supergirl crossover when they crossed over for the first time. Kara and Barry met. That was an amazing episode. Okay, so let's move on past this. So Maxwell Lord was originally supposed to continue as a main character, but had to be written out when production moved from Los Angeles to Vancouver for season two. Well, same thing goes for Lucy Lane, which is the next one, and we'll get to the next thing after that. But Maxwell Lord and Lucy Lane being written out is very well known within our fandom, and that is because the actors didn't want to actually move up to Vancouver and shoot there, because if you guys didn't know, Supergirl was originally on CBS. Yes, CBS, CW is a subsidiary of them, and they are linked, and it's still operated by Warner Brothers. However, CBS does most of the stuff in LA with higher budgets and the CW does most of the stuff up in Vancouver or, you know, like a couple of different cities like Black Lightning is in a different city in America. However, most of their stuff is up in Vancouver and so that means that the actors are there most of the year and so the actors for Maxwell Lord and Lucy Lane didn't want to go up and same thing actually happened with Cat Grant which is the next point. So Cat was written out of the show where she was actually supposed to continue onwards and she was obviously a major character but she was written out in a good way I think and she's came back a couple of times so I think it was the best handled leave and so the original showrunner Ali Adler for season one 
initially rejected the possibility of crossovers with the CW superhero shows, which were running at the same time The Flash and Arrow were running when Supergirl was in at season one, but after the decline in ratings, apparently The Flash appeared in a late episode and that was due to the ratings. However, this was never confirmed, so we don't know about that. But considering that Greg Berlanti wanted to start the Arrowverse and sort of expand it a bit more than just the Flash and Arrow, and considering that he literally show ran Supergirl like he was one of the producers on Supergirl since the start, even though he wasn't the showrunner, he was in control of it as well as, you know, all the rest of the Arrowverse shows. So he could have totally put in a word and be like, yeah, let's try and cross this over. And maybe Ali was against the idea at first, but he made it work in the end. Now let's move on to season 2, so McCarr Brooks considered leaving the show after season 2 but ultimately decided to stay after being persuaded, so I guess you know this could have been a possibility but he did stick around but he did end up leaving the show so it doesn't sound too unlikely. Alright moving on to the next point, Lena Luthor was originally supposed to be morally ambiguous before it was ultimately decided to make her genuinely good and a friend of Team Supergirl and specifically Supergirl. So this doesn't sound too outrageous because the Luthors are notorious for being very morally ambiguous and most of the time quite villainous. Okay, a romance between Lena and Winshot was considered in season two before she was ultimately paired with James Olsen. So this would have been interesting. I don't know what it would be like between Lena and Wynn because they're like the complete opposite person. Wynn is so shy and you know, he's kind of all over the place. And then you got Lena who is a bit more calculating and a bit more stern. So it would have been strange, but I'm kind of glad that they went with James in the end. Anyway, uh, Snapper Car was originally supposed to continue as a main character, but was ultimately written out to streamline the cast this makes sense because Snapper Car was bad. He was bad. Guys, let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree with me? He was just like, uh, why is he here character? That's what I call him. Anyway, Cyborg Superman also was originally going to return, but was ultimately written out due to David Harewood's dislike for the character. And I think that's the right decision. And I think David was totally in the right in this position because Cyborg Superman wasn't the best. Jeremiah Danvers was originally supposed to return, but he was ultimately written out due to scheduling conflicts with Dean Cain. And I personally think that one of the other reasons is Dean Cain is very outspoken with his political views. And I'm pretty sure Supergirl don't want him back. The showrunners don't want him back because literally everything that they go for in the show is the complete opposite to what Dean Cain believes. And the same thing goes for Kevin Sorbo, who played mon dad, I really don't think they ever want them back. And President Olivia Marsden, who is played by Linda Carter, was created as a stand-in for Hillary Clinton as it was expected she would win the 2016 election. So that makes sense and they did introduce that and later, actually this is one of the other things, in season 4 they introduced Vice President Baker who was created as a stand-in for Trump, who replaced Marsden due to his election in the 2016 election in America so that kind of makes sense and I mean the kind of roles they play totally line up so let's move on to season three so showrunner Andrew Kreisberg was fired midway through production obviously this wasn't supposed to happen like they didn't plan on this happening but it did happen so he was fired and this affected the production schedules and that's why we had that big break in season three so that was a change even though it wasn't like a story change it kind of messed up the schedule, if you guys remember. So, the next point in Season 3 is that McGann was originally supposed to return, but was scrapped due to scheduling conflicts with Sharon Lil. However, she has come back since, and she is currently in the new season, and she's there for at least a couple of episodes. So, you know, they work things out with McGann, like with Sharon, I mean, and McGann has returned since. And so Maggie Sawyer was originally supposed to remain a main character in season three, but had to be written out due to Floriana Lima's other commitments. This makes sense because she was in a show, I think it was Punisher at the same time. So Brainiac 5 was added as a replacement for Wynn's shot in season three. And this makes complete sense considering that Jeremy decided not to return for season four and they needed someone. So in season three, they introduced Brainiac 5 
and it was kind of like a perfect switch although we all did miss win and the last few things and i'm not sure if this is 100 percent true but this is in the same kind of thread that i'm reading off of so lucy lane was meant to develop originally into superwoman but the storyline was dropped when they lost the actress so this would have been interesting if this actually turned out to be true because i don't know if they would ever properly get to superwoman on the show but it's a cool idea that they would have like an alternate version of Supergirl at the same time, not played by Melissa, but played by someone else. I guess you could compare it to like Barry and Wally, so you have the Flash and Kid Flash working at the same time. I think that would have been cool if we saw Superwoman. And so apparently Crypto was in an early draft of the script, so I'm presuming that's the pilot episode. So it would have been cool if we saw Crypto the dog. Super dog, I mean. However, in the scheme of things, I don't think he would have been that necessary. So I'm not 100% against this. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video and you did enjoy me going over what could have happened on the show, what was planned but didn't go ahead, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting the bell notification button if you are new. And for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.